Welcome to TFR Let's Talk. I'm your host, Sapin Bharti, and my next guest is Manu Bansal, co-founder and CEO of LightUp. Manu, it's good to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. Glad to be talking to you. Uh, let's get started with the story of LightUp. You are one of the co-founders. So tell me um, why, when you found LightUp, what was the problem that you saw in the space that you're trying to solve? Yeah, um, it's been very uh, a very personal journey for me. So before starting LightUp, I was building a company called Luhana. Um, it got acquired by VMware in 2019. We were building a predictive analytics system for telcos and processing um, tremendous amounts of data in real time. At its peak, we were doing 3 million events per second at sub-second latency and running machine learning models on top for predicting performance in the telco network. Um, and um, where we spent most of our time debugging things or fixing issues that would catch us by surprise, it used to be data issues. So if machines would go down or um, infrastructure would break, we would know immediately we had monitoring there. Um, if application endpoints would become unresponsive, we would know that too, right? But where we kind of lagged a lot of visibility or observability was in the data that was feeding our pipeline. And it was a garbage in garbage out system. So if you're putting in bad data, you will just get bizarre results. And we just didn't have any tools to deal with that issue. And it always used to be a very ad hoc, very manual reactive process. Um, and you said we can do better, we should be able to do better, um, otherwise it becomes embarrassing situations. Um, that's what led to um, you know, looking into the problem of data quality in modern data pipelines and data stacks. Um, and I looked around and saw that problem elsewhere as well, uh, whether it's a retail company, it's a fintech company, you know, the same symptom everywhere. And we said this, is, um, this needs solving um, as the world is starting to be more and more data driven. So what's the story for data observability and monitoring data quality as data is passing through the pipelines? That's what led to light up. Excellent. Now, when we do talk about observability, you know, monitoring, logging, understandability, we mostly talk about the state of application, but here we are talking about data in general. And the fact is that, you know, when the data is what we should care about, right? Application can be rebooted and everything else. But so, 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 so talk about uh, how much focus is already there uh, on data, number one. And number two is that how different are the challenges when you're dealing with data when it comes to whether observability or understandability, and then actually going and debugging the thing. Because we do talk about observability a lot. It tells us that, hey, something is happening in that direction, but what to do with that? So so let's talk about that part. Right, I mean, that's a, that's a um, very important question. Why is data observability a new and a different problem, right? And you can kind of contrast it with um, observability in say IT monitoring or application monitoring, you can also compare it to um, the previous generation version of data quality as a problem, right? So let's kind of talk about both of those uh, vectors. Um, so when you compare it to IT infrastructure in particular, let's say you pick up Datadog to monitor your IT, right? Um, There's a common denominator. You're talking about the same kind of metrics. You have CPU and memory and disk to monitor across um, a cluster of machines or containers, right? And that's the same um, regardless of what domain you're operating in as a business. Um, so there's a very strong common denominator. When it comes to monitoring data, things are not as cut and dry, right? Data is very business specific. Um, data's cadence is very business specific. Maybe someone is processing data every minute, someone else is processing data once every day or even slower, right? Um, and then it's a multi-stakeholder conversation. Usually when you're talking about deciding on the health of data. Sometimes the data engineer is able to make a judgment, but at other times you want to include a product manager too. Um, so the problem is just fundamentally more diverse when it comes to monitoring data, which is probably why it has been unsolved um, in the new stack for such a long time, because it's not been clear how you would go about doing it, right? It's a very different uh, kind of a beast. If you kind of compare it to last generation of data quality tools, um, let's say Informatica or Talents, or maybe even Trifacta, um, those tools are coming from a different um, generation altogether when we used to think about data being a static object. Um, you're talking about spreadsheets you're getting in or a small database, like let's say a collection of rows in MySQL. And you're talking about data quality analysis in the same sense as doing an interactive BI analysis, right? So you have a human being sitting at the other end making queries about data quality assessment and deciding if data is good or not. That also doesn't work anymore when you talk about modern data pipelines where data is flowing in continuously in large volumes and large cardinality, where it's simply impossible to inspect manually, but it's a continuous monitoring problem. 
So there are similarities with IT monitoring, uh, but then there's data which is very diverse and business specific and just creates a very new problem. Right. Also, uh, the fact is that we actually live in a data driven world, no matter where you look at. I mean, I'm not even talking about all the way from IoT devices to sensor or Tesla cars. They're sending so much data back and forth there. Uh, and, and also, we are storing data in you can uh, data warehouses. This could be data lakes, and then you're also moving data around. So uh, and data itself has no value. That you have to extract value from the data also. So when we do look at data reliability, or you know, <laughs> if you go back to observability or debugging it, uh, we are also looking at new set of challenges also because edge uh, data centers they have created a totally unique problem because it's sitting far remote with latencies and everything, and then we also have data which is changing so fast. So can you you allude to that in the beginning? We did talk about you know that you know it's a bit different, but. What I'm going to get into also is how, how how different it is and what are the unique challenges because of all these uh, things that we are seeing are happening. Uh, data is changing so fast. And we are creating a huge amount of data also. Yeah, actually, I mean, the question you're raising is um, kind of about the timing or like what signs are we seeing today, right? I mean, data just looks like such a complex beast. It's not clear. Can you even solve that problem? Right. What is it now that's happening in the world that makes it a tenable problem? Right. So I think the, we've seen kind of a couple of major architectural shifts happen in, let's say, last five years or so. Right. And we've been talking about big data since, let's say, Hadoop came about in mid um, 2000s. And then we saw that graduate into the Spark ecosystem. And then we used to talk about Kafka and streaming data. And that was like this um, complex um, real-time stream processing pipeline where data is just sitting in memory, right? The big shift I think that we are seeing now, which is very promising from the point of view of data control, data governance, and data quality, is move from traditional ETL pipelines to an ELT-style uh, way of building the stack, right? And at the center of that is the rise of the cloud data warehouse. So we kind of saw cloud happen after we talked about big data, and we also saw the warehouse come up to scale right, where we used to have databases which didn't scale, then we went to these very unstructured data lakes. And now we're starting to get kind of the best of both with the warehouse and maybe structured query engines on top of your data lake. So you're seeing this ELT style architecture where no matter where your data sits, the tendency is to bring that into a central place, whether it's a data lake with a structured query engine on top or it's a data warehouse. And then you want to successively refine that data, make it more and more usable for the end purpose, whether it's feeding a BI dashboard or feeding a product even or feeding a machine learning model, right? So this warehouse or the lake at the center is the one place where you can actually run all those data quality checks, regardless of whether your data is getting collected from the edge, data is already collected from the cloud or coming from user devices, um, we're just starting to bring that into the warehouse or the lake because it's economical and it's very powerful to do that. Now we can just operate on data at rest while still meeting our latency requirements, right? Um, so that's that's the shift, I think, that's leading to this new generation of data quality solutions um, where it suddenly so looks like a very solvable problem. Um, it has been important, but it has really not been solvable um, until the warehouse came about. Right. So, if since you're mentioning those, I also want to know if you look at you know things like you know Snowflake or Databricks uh, and all those other new technologies, and also uh, you we talked about data warehouses, data lakes. Uh, how are things from from observability or debugging, or looking at problem and trying to solve perspective? Are they making it like things like Snowflake and data making things better or making them worse? I mean, it's nothing to do with making them worse. The, the, I mean, with cloud native world, you know, things are so complicated, they get complex so quickly. You know, if you look at CNCF landscape, there are so many logos up there. So complexity is part of cloud native world in today's world, at least for now. So, so, so talk about that factor as also. Yeah, so, there, so you know, there's something interesting with the way lakes and warehouses have evolved, which is that um, in many ways, we have brought back a lot of the features we took for granted in the world of relational databases, right? So it's almost the same view that you would get with Databricks um, on De Delta Lake or um, with Snowflake as the warehouse. But then there are these subtle differences, right? Because we did have to give some of those features up to get that scalability, right? So for example, Snowflake will not enforce a primary key constraint on your data, 
right? It could be a suggestion for another um, analytics developer to look at, um, but that's not something that the engine is enforcing because it just takes away a lot of the scalability that you would get with the distributed database, right? Um, and if you drop down to, del uh, to, to data lakes, you give up even more of that structure that you expect from data for it to be healthy, right? Um, so in many ways, um, the warehouse has, or, uh, has made life easier compared to the previous generation of ETL style workloads where everything was just data in motion. At least you're now working with data at rest, but at the same time, um, the scalability comes at the expense of some of the traditional data integrity checks, um, which we need to we need to think about uh, with a clean slate, right? And are, these are probably not going to make it into the data fabric itself. This has to be a separate tool on the side, which is why we believe that um, a company like LightUp can do really well and fits this conversation so well. Um, it it should not and will likely not reside in your data store itself, right? Because it's an expensive feature and you want to apply it selectively. Sometimes you want to apply it with the context of the specific business use case, right? Um, so, so to your point, um, the warehouse has made things easier, but it has also created this additional complexity because it's not exactly the same feature set that we used to have in the world of databases. Uh, as you're saying earlier, you know that uh, uh, even uh, uh, all those uh, BI tools they have been around for decades, and and there are a lot of legacy companies, there are a lot of legacy solutions that are you know trying to solve the problem. So. Uh, uh, I mean, <laughs> the way legacy systems work is totally different than the way we work in the, especially cloud native data centric work. So can you kind of give a contrast that, you know, where those tools fail without naming anybody and how light up come into the picture to solve these new problems in new ways? Um, so I think that's a great question. Um, just in terms of how would you create the ideal solution knowing what we know today? and the kind of workloads and data volumes we are having to deal with, right? Um, I think in one simple explanation, uh, one line summary, it's just data scaling, right? That's what um, becomes the biggest challenge um, for legacy tools. They were designed in a very different world when we were dealing with small static data sets, right? Um, and what that concretely means is that those tools are designed with kind of an import and inspect um, workflow where you have a human being running interactive analysis, right? But those tools will try to bring out the data from wherever it is wherever it is residing into the tool itself before you can run quality tests, right? Um, that doesn't scale anymore. You can't expect to bring out petabytes of data from a Redshift or a Snowflake instance before you can run checks on it. Instead, what we are doing, which is what um, we seem to be needing now, is to flip the model and say, you already have a scalable warehouse or a lake. Can you now some, uh, offload some of those tests down to uh, the scaled out fabric, which already exists to run queries on the data, right? So the way we have architected the system is we can go and issue data quality queries into the warehouse or the data lake, right? And we are never actually having to bring out the raw data into our system. So that just fundamentally gives you a scaling advantage where you're not having to duplicate um, scaling the solution and not having to spin up separate infrastructure to do this. Perfect. Now, since we are talking about how you do things differently, I also want to know a bit about uh, your offerings, your solutions, uh, your you know kind of uh, product portfolio. Is it service-based? Is it solved software? Let's talk about that. Um, so we recently announced a beta program. Um, we, we announced that in April, and we are now um, accepting early users, early adopters, who are interested in solving this problem with us and partner with us, or kind of take the product where they need it to go. Um, and we're basically seeing a lot of interest from large, uh, large scale customers, whether they're coming from retail or coming from food and beverage industry, um, but like the classic enterprise, and there's also interest from mid-market. Um, and, and both of those are great, great use cases for our system. Um, we can already create a lot of value out of the box um, one thing we kind of learned the hard way along the way was um, when we are talking about data quality, we are basically touching the crown jewels of the customer. This is business critical data, very sensitive at times. Um, so the way we architect the system was um, we could uh, we can deploy it on cloud as a SaaS service, but we can also bring the system over to the customer's cloud. Um, and it could also go into uh, legacy data centers, just the same. 
So that's turn, turning out to be a really powerful feature. Um, it's kind of necessary in cases where you have regulatory requirements or compliance requirements, where even if you trusted light up with data privacy and security, your own customer base may not permit um, deploying the solution uh, as a cloud service. Um, so we're very open to bringing the solution into your cloud and we have put in a lot of effort into making it turnkey deployment, regardless of how you choose to deploy the system. Um, and we've been able to show results within a couple of days um, in most cases, um, focusing very heavily on ease of use. Um, so very, very welcome, uh, welcoming to customers, regardless of which vertical they come from, larger the data volume, the more exciting it will be. So we just announced a beta program where a, a beta version of the lighter data quality platform is available um, to try out. Um, we can bring it into production as well. Um, and we can quickly onboard your data sets. We can start to run data quality tests on your data warehouse or your data lake. And we can also do it on data streams um, if you have data moving over Kafka or segment and just get you out of the box data quality checks in your new data stack. Excellent. Uh, you alluded to that once again earlier, but uh, what is the roadmap you offer beta? So when do we expect it to become available generally? And what kind of pipeline or roadmap you have for this year? Um, so, so we are targeting um, announcing general availability towards the end of this year. Um, the goal is to kind of stress test the system on the field with early design partners, learn from, um, learn from some of those engagements. Um, and bring uh, bring an offering that is just ready to go when we actually announce it GA. Um, we are squarely focused on detecting data quality issues um, and just doing it in a way so that it's generic. Um, the system is really good at comparing data at hand with past data observed for the same data asset. So for example, we can say data is looking abnormal today relative to what it looked like in the last week, right? Um, so that's a core problem our system solves, which generalizes very well across verticals, across businesses and use cases. Um, that's a core problem we're trying to solve. Um, we have seen some really promising results with, um, with design partners so far. And that's the product we want to um, really hone in on by end of this year and announce GA before we start to diversify into other use cases, be it around um, detecting PII or going more into the cataloging side, um, that remains to be seen. Manu, thank you so much for sitting down with me today and not only share the story, the history, the origin of LightUp, but also the challenges that are there in the space when it comes to data. We do talk about observability, about application and workload, but we don't talk about data. So thanks for sharing those insights. And uh, I look forward to talk to you again soon, because as you mentioned, there's so much happening at the company uh, when the GA comes. And I'm sure there will be a lot of things that will happen between now and general availability. So I look forward to talk to you again soon. So thank you. It was a pleasure talking to you, Swapnil. Thanks a lot for having me on the show, and um, we'll stay tuned.